You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. And welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. Awesome because we've got some effing fantastic news for you. <laughs> yes, indeed. And I'm Rob, by the way. Um, this is Paul. In this episode 683, we're really excited that you're with us. And it is some, it's really, really cool news. I think a lot of you may have already heard about it, but we're going to go into it a little bit because it is, uh, well, like I was just telling Paul as we were chatting about this before we went live, I didn't expect to see this this soon. You frankly. didn't expect to see it for a long, long, long time. time. <laughs> That's right. That's what he said before the show. I did say a long time. What are we talking about? We are talking about the LANC, the Low Altitude Authorization Notification Capability, whoever came up with uh, that acronym. I do think they could have done better than that, but okay. Well, I mean, we could just do a whole show let's, on the acronyms they could have come up with. Let's not quibble about an acronym when this no, is so exciting. This is good news. So today we're talking about the LANC. It's been launched. There are... A significant number of airports. It's like 49, right, is what they launched? Uh-huh. Something like um, that. They're in specific regions, so we're going to be talking about that. Anything from Bravo to Delta to Echo airspace. I didn't I didn't skip Charlie, or did I? Charlie's included as well. Uh, things like Reno Airport, Lincoln Airport, San Jose Airport. Um, but this is essentially how to get instantaneous airspace authorizations if you are a part of 107 pilot. And then before we go into the how, the why, the where, the what, uh, this episode is brought to you by our friends at Colorado Drone Chargers. Go to coloradodronechargers.com. If you need a quad charger to charge four batteries at one time for Mavic Pro, Phantom 4 Pro, Inspire 1, or Matrice 100, um, uh, we are going to be bench testing their new Inspire 2 uh, quad charger. Very excited about that. And uh, that should be coming out soon. But if you need to charge lots of batteries at one time when you have power, then you've got to check them out, coloradodronechargers.com, and use discount code DRONEU8, that's D-R-O-N-E, the letter U, the number 8. So that's DRONEU8 to save a good little chunk on those chargers. And uh, they are truly, truly awesome. If you're coming to our mapping course uh, in November, then you'll see a couple of them there because we love to use them. But anyway, uh, also this show is brought to you by our friends at videoblocks.com. Don't let obstacles come in the way of producing high quality productions. If you ever need copyright free songs, copyright free clips, if you need to hear birds in the background as you're shot going down the beach, it really does add a little touch there, Rob. It does. Yeah. And they have a lot of it. They sure do. They have a lot of other great things too. They can increase your production value. And if you go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone, you can save a significant amount of money. Go to videoblocks.com and find out what the offer is good for. Anyway, let's get into the link. So the low altitude authorization notification capability system is now live. And they have launched this at some, uh, some very big airports, including Miami-Dade, um, Phoenix Airport, Reno, San Jose, Lincoln, uh, the Anchorage Basin, uh, Anchorage International Airport. And there are a lot of Class Echo airports in the Midwest. So if you're in the Midwest, like Alexandria, that's actually where I grew up, but that was Alexandria, Virginia. Um, <laughs> if you're in Alexandria, Minnesota, if you're in Iowa, if you're in uh, Brookings, South Dakota, Columbus, Nebraska, um, in Fort Dodge, Iowa, Hastings, Nebraska, South Dakota, Iron Mountain, Michigan. All over the place. Ironwood, Michigan, Norfolk, Nebraska. I wonder if they say Nafuck like they do in Virginia or if it's Norfolk. Just be careful. You accentuate the... Nafuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking about Norfolk. I know you are. Anyway. <laughs> yes, you are. So, <laughs> over and over. <laughs> um, we're really excited about this. So there are there are two vendors that are offering access to the LANC system. AirMap. And you know how we feel about AirMap. How do we feel about AirMap, Rob? Uh, I'm going to let you speak for yourself. On I hate AirMap. <laughs> That's, wow. Mm. Strong words. Yep. And who's the other vendor? 
Skyward.io. Mm. Who Who's going to be, be on the show soon? Tomorrow. They're going to be on the show tomorrow. So we're really excited. Well, they're recording tomorrow. We're recording a bunch of shows today. So it may not actually be your tomorrow, but it's going to be our tomorrow. Uh, so Skyward is actually going to come on and give us information and details about the LANC system in addition to their fleet management system, which I'm really excited to uh, actually get to know because I think it's going to be something really good for us here at DroneU as we are farming out more and more jobs to our students, members, and DroneU elite. So we're very Indeed. excited about that. Very excited to see that system. But um, if you go to Skyward, that's S-K-Y-W-A-R-D dot I-O, uh, you can sign up and use the LANC system, I believe, for free. Now, we will be getting more details on what's free, what's included, what's not included. I'm pretty sure they said it was going to be free, and that was they were committed to making that be the case. Yeah, because someone said that it was going to be like 250 bucks a month to access the system, and uh, that didn't sound right. Yeah, but we wanted to see how long it would take to actually requests and authorization. So I'm going to play this little video. So right now, what we do is we open up skyward.io, we log in, we search for the area that we want to go to. So you enter a location, top right corner of your screen, in the bar. You're now going to draw a little flight area on where you want to go. Isn't this music amazing? I mean, like... Could be way worse. We just drew our area. Now we go to plan our flight. We name our flight and the operation. We define our operation. So we're actually going to enter the date, October 30th, and the time. And by the way, it looks like you can do a date pretty close to when you're actually filling this in. Uh, I'm going to try it as soon as we get off this show for an hour from now. Yeah, exactly. So, in fact, I should just try to do it right now. But, so now we enter the date, we enter the time, we go back and we attach the area that we drew out on the map, we request the authorization, agree to the terms, which are all part 107, and then you hear this sound. <laughs> That's the magic sound. What a beautiful sound. That's the magic sound. It is kind of a happy sound. It is a very, it a good very choice happy by them. sound. So on the notice of authorization, let's see, what is on here? So it gives you date and time. It gives you the maximum altitudes that you can fly to, um, and it says the condition of the authorization. So maintain visual line of sight. Aircraft speed cannot exceed 100 miles an hour. Do not fly over non-participants. Do not exceed maximum altitude. Ensure there are no TFRs before flying, and the weather ceiling must be above 100 feet AG. 1,000 feet. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, thank you for calling me out on that. The weather ceiling must be above 1,000 feet AGL. That's interesting because normally you're supposed to have three miles of visibility. So that's very interesting. Um, in accordance with Title 14 CFR Part 107.41, your operation is authorized within the designated airspace and time frame constraints. That whole thing took one minute and 13 seconds. Yeah, it's very cool. I, one question I have is how long would somebody want to keep these? And I would imagine just keep them electronically indefinitely. I would print every one as a PDF and put it on my computer in case I ever got a phone call from the FAA, which exactly. is doubtful, but you always want to make sure you have yeah. the paperwork. Yeah, exactly. Don't just use it and then get rid of it and not have it to go back to, obviously. Definitely. If you want to check out what air, uh, airports are now using this system, we will provide the link in the show, but it's actually pretty simple. FAA.gov forward slash UAS forward slash programs underscore partnerships. Okay, it's not that easy. So question I, that I'd like for you to answer for the listeners, um, most people know the importance of this, but just talk a little bit about the significance and why this is such a big deal. Well, this is such a big deal because people have been waiting over 100 days, sometimes 120, sometimes 150, mm -hmm. up to, I've seen now 165 now, days to get an authorization. So story after story of people who had really good opportunities to do jobs. And missed out and, and someone out. flew it illegally anyway. Correct. Yeah. Oftentimes. Right. And so, you know, this does a couple things. It gives those people the opportunity to get the authorizations they need in a timely manner to go do the job. But hopefully it also starts to weed out those people that are doing things the wrong way. Yeah. And I really hope that it does do that. Again, with the aeroscope system, that should also help True. our the responsible pilots uh, maintain, you know, the rights to fly and whatnot. So I think this is really good. Um, guys, I think we're going to be seeing more and more airports come out. But the way that they're going to come out 
if I understand it correctly, is essentially every 56 days we've been seeing these UAS FM maps, these facility maps come out in the same time frame that sectional charts are updated. So I believe that based on the updates from the sectional charts and the UAS FM maps, that that's when we will be seeing um, more airports appear on the LANC system. Now, I will say uh, where I actually had um, an F, I think I said, mentioned this in the last podcast. We were talking to an FAA person going over an airspace for a job that I flew last week. And looking at a sectional, it was not a controlled airspace. Looking at Sky Vector, Air Nav was not in controlled airspace. Um, looked at Air Map was not in controlled airspace. Um, then went to the facilities map and it said that it was limited to 300 feet. Hmm. So I called my little FAA buddies. I said, hey, man, I need a favor. <laughs> That's exactly how I said it. I too. believe you. Um, and they said, hey, Paul. And they were like. Because they knew that it was you. like, hey, Paul, how you doing? <laughs> All um, right. And then the conversation went. Then the conversation went. I think there's an error with the UAS FM maps. Mm. And, you know, a lot of surveyors, a lot of um, inspectors, they say that they love surveying, but they hate GIS. This is actually, I had a conversation with someone uh, over the weekend with Doug. We were out having beers and, and we met someone and he's like, I hate GIS. And I really didn't understand why, um, because I understand GIS as, um, well, it's geographical information systems, but essentially as a real world example of information that's on a map. Well, I've been learning that the maps are not always accurate because of limitations within software and limitations within um, many different things. Like essentially, if you get airspace grid maps that are not ortho rectified, meaning they the earth isn't flat, right? Right. Pretty so sure. if we put a square <laughs> box over the earth, essentially those boundaries and lines would actually change based on the curvature of the earth, right? You would actually cover more space or less space if you put a little box over the earth, right? right. So I think that's actually what happened here. Um, so in this, in this area, the UAS FM map said that there, it was controlled airspace, but the sectional said it was not controlled airspace. So there may be a little bit of um, corrections on the UAS FM map. So if you see an error, though, you should report it um, to the FAA. I think that's really, really important um, because, you know, some, you know, some ATC managers at these airports may be claiming more airspace than they actually control. And mm. we've got to make sure that uh, we are treated equally. I wonder as... if there's a mechanism for doing that through this system if you run into an issue. Yeah, that's really interesting. Because I, I would imagine, I mean, any new piece of software has bugs to some degree, right? Oh, like so iOS would, 11. Like, yeah, even Apple, right? But um, who's up 8% oh, in you, a month. You mean how I can't turn my Wi-Fi off even though I turn it off and it turns itself back on? Yeah, <laughs> yes. And yet the stock is up 8% this month. I don't understand month. that. It's Apple, man. Anyways, I we know. digress. Yes, we digress. Anyway, we're very excited about this because for a long time, people have been waiting for authorizations, and now the instantaneous system is here. Very excited about it. Very excited to see more airports come out. Um, would love to hear uh, how things are working for you. One of our members, uh, Frank Testa, mm -hmm. tried out the system in Reno and had success with it. He just did it all on his phone. That's beautiful. So obviously, there's a lot of areas out there in the rest of the country that are not going to be able to do I mean, they're not going to have this for a little while. True. So it's the same old story, but hopefully they start to roll this out quick. Well, we're, we are celebrating, I mean, most of the areas that, that I fly, that I have issues with, that I don't have authorizations for, a.k.a. KPHX, mm -hmm. um, this is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So it is, is really nothing awesome. short of awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy. Step in the right direction, FAA. Clapping my hands for you. Yeah, and I'm actually looking forward to the conversation that you have with Skyward and just kind of how it all came together and, and what the plans are for the future. It's pretty pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. So anyway, uh, make sure to check out that show, but that is going to do it for us today. Let us know how your experiences go with using, and my phone's ringing, um, oh wow, on two different places. <laughs> um, this is awkward. Um, let us he know. He would have yelled at me for that, oh, by the way. way. I, you guys know that, you right? You want to yell at me really quick, Ron? No, I really don't. Are you sure? Because it's not that big of a deal. Oh. Okay, well, I do get a lot of phone calls, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.